All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to No Jump Air. We're in here today with Jace, the underground legend. Why are we doing this remotely? Are you scared to come here like Aunt Glizzy? Well, hell no, bro. I'm a, I'm, I got a case. I got to get quarter pools to move around. That shit. Oh, okay. So you're stuck in uh, Texas at the moment? Yeah. And still got your own house arrest and shit? Or you can move around. You can't just leave Texas. And the Nah, I just can't leave Texas. Word. So wh we've been trying to interview for you for a while. What made you decide that it was finally the right time? I'm being overdue. I'm being overdue, for real. Plus, hell yeah, yeah. Really just overdue, bro. And you posted some shit. And I don't know if you took money to post it or if you just organically posted it. I think it was Remo. Remo, remind me what this was. What was it? What was the post exactly? It said I lost my kids. You posted that? It'd be a lot of shit going on. So it <laughs> possibly could have been me, probably somebody on uh, social media team. I think I do remember this was about like two, three months back. Yeah, yeah, about that. So what was the scenario with that? Because they were saying that uh, you, you did... Uh, I have a situation where, uh, I guess, child services or something. Where did that come from, anyway? Nah, see, the clip was out of context. <clears throat> I was just having, I was having, you know, career issues. And I was saying that was at risk of happening. With my mama, her house so packed, I'm only being able to take one of my kids with me. Still going to be with, you know, my girl. Yeah. And I'm still going to, you know, have you know, the same custody of my youngest, but she would have had to live with her mama at the time. That's uh, that's basically what I was saying. Like, living situation is going to change, not really just kids getting taken. It was no Oh, uh, so it was just taken out of context. I got you. So how many kids you got now? Because I thought you only had a daughter. I got two kids. I'm working on three right now. Or, and so, okay, are they, like, wh how did you end up in a situation where you ended up having custody of the kids? Uh, my first, my first daughter, uh, it ain't come about on paper. Like, I was so young. I had love when I was 16, right? Like, she was born five days after I was 16. So, being so young, her mama just wanted to go party and get back to life. You feel me? And they got to a point to where she was leaving, a, like, my daughter with me so much. It was like, okay, she leave her for three days, pick her up the next three days. Then it got to a week, two weeks. Then it got to a month. Until I signed a deal, moved to Houston, and now when I moved back, still just like really in my custody. Like she, uh, she got a room with me. She don't sleep nowhere else. Like it just so happened to be my my oldest. Though I'm with her mama. That's my current girl type. Because I was thinking that's like it's super rare for a dude to end up with custody of the kid, and then it's super rare for a rapper to end up with custody of the kids, especially like a younger rapper. That's just like a scenario that I don't know if I ever really heard about before. Yeah, yeah, it just really came about for real. Like, she just started, she just stopped seeing the, like, you know, my daughter like that. So it just got to a point to where she just lived with me. And it was step. She's been with me so long. Even though I don't got custody on paper, you still just can't come into a child's life and be like, you living with me now. You know, because she had that age to where that's all she knows. They're living with me, Tysha. Mm, definitely. So, okay, where where is your life at right now? Like, what what is this case that you're fighting at this point? I can't talk about too much of it, but it's all going to be smooth type shit. Like, it is what it is. A little ass case. This is a new get ass lawyer out of Houston. This is the new case, or this is the, like, the famous case that everybody's been talking about? It's the same case. Word. With uh, Summers and everybody that was involved or whatever, some like that. Yeah. So that case initially oh, ended the the friendship with you, Summers, and everybody? With you and Slay World? Like, would you say that case is the start of why you don't Slay World anymore? No, nah, me and Summers, me and Summers still talking in there. Oh, word. But you guys weren't cool at some point, right? We still talking in there. You weren't cool uh, at some point, though, right? We, didn't was avoiding contact. We, was, we was avoiding contact. I would say we wasn't cool, though. <laughs> I mean, it did seem like I wasn't cool because I was trying to say you snitched and all type of shit, and it was really coming from their side. 
from this underground. You can't take the underground serious. It's 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 the Nick Tune, it's the Nick Junior of of rap of the mainstream. See, that's interesting because when I was like looking into your whole story and everything, it kind of felt like you being part of this whole underground scene was kind of like unlikely. Like you seem like you would probably like fit in with more like street type rappers and shit, but then somehow you just because of the music or whatever you were into, you kind of ended up with this like different crowd, this like weird underground world. Is that accurate from your perspective? Uh, really, I just I had to learn getting older. I don't enjoy being a rapper. I just like making music. So like to put it in retrospect, I don't like going to do shows or dress up none of that type of. Shit. But I enjoy sitting in front of the mic, this mic, and making songs and like shooting videos and. Really, just creating the music. That's what I love. I love being a rapper. See, and like to answer your question in the industry, like it seem it do seem like I would you know fit in more with like certain type of rappers, but you got to do a lot of shit against your morals to really be up there. You feel me? And that's not type of shit go for. Only because I be knowing like I did a lot of LSD. I done did a lot of all types of shit back then. So I'm to the point to where my third eye open. I know like got to die one day. My life ain't going to be spent trying to impress a certain group of people, you feel me? Especially musically, demonic. But so you're saying that you came up in more of a street environment, but that you don't really like pushing that type of shit in your music as opposed to like doing some more underground type where the vibe is a little bit more laid back and creative? Nah, yeah, I like doing auto-tune shit. I like making, I like making mainstream. I like making different type of music. I like making rock music, all types of shit. I'm working on this project right now. I got like girls singing on it. And That's the type of shit coming on. Like also Eminem type shit. You think your audience is accepting of that? Oh yeah, I got a real cold fan base. I go a lot. A lot of underground rappers that was popping at twenty twenty wood, they not really just too relevant though, but but my numbers my numbers still up say decline since twenty twenty wood. I had a few hits, but that's a few hits. Like it ain't it ain't been a, it ain't been enough millions to say I consistently had millions. You feel me? Any other views outside of that still been the same type. Interesting. What What do you feel like the current state of the underground uh, scene right now? I think it's interesting. I think I think it's watered down now, though. Nobody talking about. I was probably like one of the last people in the underground to come through talking about baby mamas, homies dying, all types of shit. Yeah. Really rapping about that, singing about that type. Because a lot of like underground shit, like SoundCloud rap, and you really think about what it was, a lot of it was just like dudes who were talking about a bunch of guns and drugs in a lot of cases. Well, the drugs were probably real, but you know, they definitely have not done any of this like violence that they were writing songs about. And that is kind of. You know, there's there's a lot of rappers from that era that I won't name who are basically famous for putting out an image of themselves that wasn't real, and at some point people kind of figure that out. Yeah, no, yeah, most definitely. It's a lot of little kids running this shit right now, but I think it's just gonna get younger and younger as time goes on. You know, it's like who would you rather trust? You know, with your car, uh, a minor or you know somebody you know that's grown adult, that type of shit. The under. I'm just really in the state and in the hands of like young right now. So we don't know where it could go. They can do something good with it. They can fuck it up. Yeah, it's weird to be an old head in the underground. It's like it doesn't really work in the long run. It feels like you're, you're supposed to like succeed out of it. I seen somebody made a whole video analyzing DJ Fat. And the whole like theme of it was like basically that like he should have graduated out of this at a certain point. And I'm like, man, maybe he just fucks with the music. He just hasn't been bored of it yet. Yeah, I know, for real. DJ Fat, he OG in this shit. You know, yo, soccer I've been on a long time. I feel like it's not organic as what it was no more. I feel like it's not enough, you know, uh, how could I put it, like, just heart and soul in this music shit anymore. In this underground shit. I can smoke on here, right? Like, yeah, of course. Yeah. But yeah, so, like, as far as the underground and shit, you, uh, because I, I seen an interview where you were kind of saying that, uh, like I think it was you was going at Xavier so based because you wasn't really 
with the type of music he he making and shit. You feel like he, he's a part of the problem? Like he's he's one of the kids that you're saying is like too young, really not putting out substance and really just, you know what I'm saying, just rapping? Uh, I respect what he doing. He he a humble kid for sure. Uh, that was just one of my rants. So I'm doing, uh, like, I grew up listening to 50, Wayne, Eminem, all uh, types of shit. I feel like, you know, the the focus of rap shifted. First, it was talking about doing all types of gangster shit. Talking about your struggles now. Nah, so yeah, because you do got like more of an old soul. Like, how did you get more, because uh, like a lot of the kids nowadays, they're not even listening and checking for Wayne, you know, Eminem and shit. That's so, like, where did you get that side of uh, music from? Like who put you on the music like that? Just growing up, my pops for real. Just growing up, the narrative of rap used to be different. I used to look at this shit. I used to look at it as a coping mechanism. Okay, we're we're, we're we were just talking about Xavier so based and uh, oh, okay. him and Xavier were alive recently. Saw that, yeah. and they were kind of like arguing and shit. But you were getting on to him about rapping about being gay or I think bisexual. I don't know what it is, but uh, how do you feel about that? Cause like that's just not what that's that's. It's just not what rap, like, you can do what you do. I don't really care. Like, you don't piss me off. Like, to be a phobic, you have to be scared of something. Like, I'm not scared of it. I just think rap comes from something better than that, you know? Not like, underground rap. rap. I feel like I mean, underground I mean, rap is, but, is a home for the gay community. <laughs> yeah, but that's what it turned into. You feel me? It ain't nothing I could do to change it, but that was just me being on a little rant type it was just something that grinded my gears type. I don't like how this type of blow up when hip hop is supposed to be a platform for people to explain they struggle with poverty, explain all types of shit. Hey, where the lot of that? What could be more of a struggle than having to be gay in the rap world though, you know? <laughs> Can't be easy. Damn, you is right. You is right. You is right. Hmm. I wouldn't I wouldn't know. <laughs> oh, uh, what's it called? Uh, so, like, bro, what, 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 what do you be like? Is it on your page that you post organically, and then you take paid type? Shit? Yeah, basically. Yeah, but that wasn't a paid post. Like, damn. Yeah, we be trying what? to like do more underground, shit, like tap in with more underground stuff, drills. Shit. We try to cover like stories that maybe aren't getting covered by some of the other outlets. So I, I don't know. I didn't even see this post, I guess, but that that's definitely a wild thing to be kind of going with without concrete proof or I without feel like, I feel asking. Like, I feel, yeah, I feel like you got a fact check only because y'all got so many. Y'all got a big audience from the suburbs, but even to the slums, to where it's like you could put people in position of getting hurt. If it's false news out there, you feel me? Because the type of dad I am, I wouldn't respect. And if it came down to it, I would punch down on a dad that's moving the way that, you know, it was brought to the public that I supposedly moved. You feel me? Like that type of shit. Like it be, it be people like, like you could, could, like I could be a target. If the wrong person seen that post, it could make me a target. You feel me? Just little like that. Bro. No, I'm with you because I'm a dad too, and that definitely is like the one thing that like you know you you can joke around about anything, you can make face fake news about anything, but as soon as you start talking about the kid thing, that's like a totally different category, and especially like, yeah, like oh, you know when you're talking about like the the, the agencies or some potentially like showing up at your crib. I've heard that I've heard about that happening to people for relatively. And that's definitely like not something. Kids to play with. always off limits, bro. Kids, kids always off limits, bro. I seen a nigga some months ago bring up your kids that were low. Niggas can't be doing that. Shit. Yeah, all the time. That's just crazy. Niggas, niggas, niggas want to play the street game. Everybody want to see who's most street. If you want to be, if you want to be technical or literal, talking about kids or involving kids is not street. That's like the number one thing to not do. Yeah, I feel you feel it. me? That's not gangster. Bringing up kids that's not gangster. I feel like I seen um, you get mad at another post that we did too. I think it was like right after Summers got jumped, you kind of like celebrated or some shit. You went live on maybe Kick, and I think I, we posted that you were like your response to it. And then I think you put something up and you said, I bet no jumper won't post this. 
So where was where was your mind state after? I, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot what I posted when I said I bet they won't post this. But uh, yeah, I think it was a post because like right after oh, Summers got oh, job. I, I think it was. I was on. I was on stupid, bro. You got to realize I'm, I just turned twenty one. I still got to turn twenty five. I still got to you know mature all the way. You feel me? It's like me and this have such a rocky relationship. Yeah. Boom. When that happened, it's like. Instant, like, oh, boom, this, this, you know, I'm just talking crazy. But then it's like I sit down, when the live end, and I'm like, that was really my dog, for real, you know? So I be having to catch myself doing stupid shit because it be shit I don't even need to be involved in. You feel me? I be mature as saying that. And that's probably, I think that's what I posted when I said I bet they won't post it. I probably explained it like I wasn't supposed to be saying all that shit, for real. I mean, people don't really get us. I don't know what niggas got going on here. People don't get beat up in the underground that much. So that was like a very like rare moment of everybody just like actually seeing one of their underground kings get his ass whooped. Yeah, it was crazy. It was wild, oh, bro. It was wild. That nigga Fat just passed away. R.P. Fat. Uh, oh, he was involved in that. Yeah, that shit is wild. Uh, yeah, I think he was. Some, I think. I think. I think. I think. He homicide game. Damn, I didn't even know that. Oh. Yeah, I seen something like other up blogs were posting it trying to say that uh that Summers Arena was uh celebrating when he died and shit too. I know you seen people picking that shit up. Yeah, yeah, he gotta grow up for that shit. He gotta grow up for that shit. It's hey, crazy. He, when when his You said what? Nah, say nah, say what you was gonna say. When what? Uh when his when his grandma passed away, everybody felt for him. You know, this is years ago though. But like he was on live, he was shedding tears, and everybody felt bad for him. Uh, I still, I, I've, I've never joked about his grandmother. I've never, you know, whoopty whoop any of that type of nonsense. So, you know, I just hope he find the truth to life, honestly. But I seen him, I seen him boasting about it. But it's SoundCloud, so I feel like he don't know what he getting himself into just because the power of the tongue. That's shit real. You think I, you think the fans really like cared when he got jumped? Uh, nobody really called it a L. Even though I feel like it was an L because you walked up on hella niggas and uh, thought it was about to go in your favor, but and it could have been avoided. But they said it wasn't an L because he stood his ground. Shit. What? So so he he, him, he, he instigated him, it. He he like went up to them and kind of like started it. Yeah, that's what they say. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It started from something backstage from what I heard. <clears throat> I think it was looking for water or something. They got into it. So yeah, you, you you like saw the clip and you were hyped and you you couldn't help but like post about it, but then you ended up like just feeling like it was kind of immature? Yeah, I see it and I was like, I'm going to go live. And I was kind of just talking. Shit. But yeah, after that, after I went live, I was like, nah, yeah, that shit immature. I ain't going to lie. Like, I came to the conclusion, I was already on my story posted it was immature before the next day, before I seen the post. You feel me? And then I was like, oh, uh, you know. But I already felt like, yeah, that ain't some, that ain't no shit to be talking about for real. No, nah, I feel that. myself in. Because sometimes, like, somebody you don't like, something bad happens to them, and you just want to say something about it, but I feel like it's better to, even if you're happy about it, to kind of, like, do that privately for the most part. But I always manage to get some jokes yeah, off. Yeah, so... Most definitely, hell yeah, hell yeah. I just feel like, I just feel like everything's such a gimmick that me genuinely as a person, I can't want nobody dead over SoundCloud or over nothing, even if we got into a scuffle. It would take a lot in the world for me to say, man, I hope this dude die. You feel me? So I feel like as humans, you really don't want to see nobody in bad positions, but you let societal views or your emotions, you know, make you look. Like you do care about certain shit when deep down you don't want to see that happen to nobody. So I feel like, you know, it wasn't even a feeling of happiness. It was just a feeling of I want to boast. I want to let my ego get high type shit. Because I mean, damn well, I really don't want no harm to nobody for real. But you, you can't help but look at it like he's somebody who dipped out on you when you were going through some hard shit where people are talking shit about you. And and you kind of can't help but like feel like it's a little bit of poetic justice when something bad happens to him, right? Yeah, humble, humble, humble beast. 
like I said, we still talk. We still talk here and there. You that, feel me? That's crazy it to is hear. What it is. I for I for I forgive, but I don't forget. You feel me? It is what it is. Life. How does y'all gotta die one day? So my 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 notoriety or my my name or my reputation or what the internet think of me, I don't let that just come in between who I am as a person. You feel me? Because I can't take that with me when I die. You feel me? How did your uh, yeah. friendship with uh, Summers and the whole Slay world even begin? They reached out, right? Uh, that nigga Summers had seen a thriller about where I was rapping like that, no auto shit. I was rapping that trap shit. And uh, he had slid in my DM and just said it was hard. And uh, we ended a song probably like a month after that. I was still at like probably 5,000 followers, 6,000 followers. And uh, sooner or later, he peeped that I was good at engineering, because that's what I really do. I just like engineering myself. I like fucking around, doing shit. And uh, he wanted me to help his little brother make good music. So I started giving his little brother pointers and shit. His ours. And then that's when, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's when uh, they just asked me to go to uh, San Antonio one time. And I just went. And then we went to Louisiana, where Desire was living at the time. And we kicked it. And uh, that was that. Ever since then, I hung out with them a few more times, and it was just what it was. By the time I moved to Houston, we was all together type shit. Everybody moved to Houston. And that was just how it went, for real. I know, I, I know, I'm know, i known him for years. I've known him for years. Oh, um, bro, for real. I was watching something today, because you were saying that uh, I think Isaiah was mad at you because y'all kind of had, like, a similar name. And he was considered Slay World at the time, too. Yeah. And then, like... He was kind of hating on you because your, your name, and they kicked him out the group chat, and they added you to the group chat. That's how I really just, y'all kind of like locked in more after that. Something yeah, like that. he be lying. He be lying about how, he be lying about how Slay World ended. Because how you just said, that's how Slay World ended. They got into an argument. He was mad because more of them was starting to fuck with me. He was telling them, like, I can't fuck with y'all if y'all gonna fuck with this nigga. And, like, he just got to seeing crazy ass shit. They removed him. They added me. But I was only in Slay World for like the last two, three months of it. Other than that, it was double R. So then how'd you end up ending it officially? Slay World just collectively ended by itself, honestly. By the time we was in Houston, niggas really just stopped saying that shit in their songs and shit. Niggas really just started. I feel like a lot of our money elevated when we went to Houston. The life upgraded. Lavish lifestyles, a lot of crazy shit going on. So I feel like that's where, you know, niggas felt like it was time to revamp it. But that was that was Ken and Summer's idea type shit to call that shit Double R. I really wasn't a part of calling it Double R. I didn't have really a say in damn near shit. Would Would you say it was kind of like just one of these situations I've seen over and over where you have some rappers and they bring somebody around and it's like the little homie, but then all of a sudden the little homie is like more popular than them. That shit never ends well. That's like a recipe for people falling out. That's, that's, I like, I'm glad you said that because that's how it was. You feel me? That's how it was. It was crazy. I I felt a lot of envy, but my heart so big, I wanted these people to be my, my close friends. You feel me? Yeah, because I seen some shit you were saying that, uh, because at this time, you was having motion and shit. 556 was up. <coughs> yeah, 556 yeah, going crazy and shit. So you said uh, Summers was asking you to uh, to cop watches for everybody in Double R? <coughs> some shit like that? Like, he was trying to get you to get him one? Nah, I signed my deal. I signed my deal. And I signed for 100K. And I got 75 up front. You feel me? So at that time, I was young as hell. But I'm smart, bro. I know I got a kid. At the time, I only had one kid. Like, nigga, I got a kid with me. Like, all this money, I'm not even spending it on clothes. I'm still looking like a regular ass nigga while signing the deal because I know every month got to go towards groceries and rent. You feel me? So he asked me, can you, let's go Cartier watch. Like, let's go, like, get me and you some watches. And I'm like, hell no, because I only got like 20K in my bank. You feel me? And I got to pay rent, all types of shit. Then it got to a point to where he was asking me, like, buy it and I'll pay you back over, like, some months of shit, like, on some layaway type shit. And I was like, hell no. Nah. And then I just ended up never doing it. We we had, we had, like, a little animosity. That's something the internet never knew about, but, like, it was a good four days after that where we wasn't talking type shit. But, uh, 
Interesting. I just, I mean, I just be having to be smart with my money for. I just seen a lot of rappers like, if you go to a lot of these rappers' cribs, bro, oh God, I know it's other rappers out there that can agree with me, bro. A lot of these niggas don't have shit in their fridge. You feel me? A lot of these niggas don't live right. You feel me? They not drinking enough water. They just popping perks, sipping drink, and eating fast food. You feel me? Shit gonna fuck them up by the time they 50. And a kid will like really force you to live more of a grown up lifestyle. Like you can't just afford to not have any food in the crib because the kid's gonna get randomly hungry. You can't afford to just be going to bed at any old time because the kid's gonna be waking you up in the morning. Like it, it just like forces adulthood on you. Exactly. You gotta think smart. You gotta move real crucial because that's just real life. That's another human you gotta take care of. You feel me? You gotta mm. raise that human. You feel me? People don't be understanding that type of shit. So you and Especially Summers, cause, you and Summers you back cool. What? what about Can Can and shit? Cause y'all was I was close at one point. Y'all talking this shit nowadays? Uh, nah. I really just only talk to Reno here and there. I be, you know, I wish them the best. Everybody having kids and shit. I just be in my own lane type shit. I be on kicking, just making music. I done solidified my role to where I don't really need a team around me to make a sustainable living you feel me that's all my life been focused on right because like you see the streaming checks and shit so you know how well you're doing you 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 just have like a consistent nice lifestyle going for yourself and does that make you not really like care about necessarily doing all the rapper shit that you could be doing (laughs) yeah i always like i said earlier i always like just knew I didn't want to be a rapper. I just wanted to make music, really just the act of creating music, not the act of being a rapper. But uh, the streaming pays more than the music. So uh, from what, you know, from how I'm seeing it, it's like, it just leads me to not care about, I wouldn't say all the rapper shit, but it leads me to not really just care about music in general. You feel me? Music is just... What it is, what's going on in the underground is going on. When I drop a song, they play it. So that's all that matters to me for real, bro. Mm. Yeah, so uh, it's a lot of places we can go because I got a lot of questions. So it's it's crazy to even hear that you said you and Reno even back talking to shit because to me personally, I was keeping up with your career from like from like way back then. It seemed like he kind of hurt your career with the allegations and shit. So for you to be the bigger man, to kind of like, you know what I'm saying, for y'all to get past that, how did y'all even like get on terms he with really, y'all? He really, he really helped me. I'm a, it's a blessing that happened. What made you say that? The people can, the people can see who's the people can see who's really authentic and who's not. You feel me? I just leave it to the people. Do you feel I got one of my brothers with me? Like he he from the hood. He from the east side of Fort Worth. Like I got real deal. Like I got a real deal life outside of SoundCloud. Like I didn't start popping up in SoundCloud until 2019. Other than that, I still I'm born in 03. Still young, but I had a whole rough upbringing. Like all types of shit. Shitty ass house. Grew up in poverty. No AC. Roaches. Dead bugs. My brother I grew up with. He's in jail right now fighting the self defense. It be a lot of shit the internet don't be knowing about that I be having to try and take care of, that I be going through. They don't be understanding that type of shit for real. So that's why I say it's a blessing that happened because I'm just living my everyday still normal lifestyle. You feel me? You can cha- you can, you can tell when a nigga changing around the way he lived, the way he talked. You feel me? We can tell, we can tell what the, what, the, what the act is. It's cool. It's entertainment. Some people not hip to it. Some people can look at a TV show and tell it's fake. Some people can watch a TV show and think the acting is amazing. You feel me? Like them old ass white people that be sitting up all day watching uh watching ID, watching the ID channel and shit. They'll be like, man, this show is so amazing. Knowing them what them actors cheap as hell. Come on, bro. That's how it is. A lot of the like YouTube videos that I was watching about you, the little documentaries and shit, they just act like it's like an open and shut thing that like you you snitch. Like, what do you say to people who go for that narrative? Shit, I just honestly tell them. I honestly tell them when people ask me, I tell them first of all, why do you need to know? Like, I need a genuine. Like, I need I need a genuine. You know, why are you worried about me? I need a genuine answer. You feel me? Why are you worried about another man? Okay, cool. You can't answer that. We on to the next question. 
do you check up on your mama as much as you hop on the internet and worry about somebody else who don't know you exist? You feel me? Can you show me your phone and show me that you are bugging your mama every day, making sure she is happy, taken care of, well fed, in a good house, in a good situation? A lot of niggas can't do that, so I just let it be what it be. Like I said, you can't take nothing with you when you die. Look, see, in life, a lot of shit can't grow after you die. Your money can't grow. Uh, even if something as natural as a flower, if you plant a flower and you die, it can't grow. But what can grow, the only thing in life that can grow after you die is your kids. You feel me? That's all I'm focused about. Anything else, when I wake up, if it ain't providing for these kids, I don't really pay too much mind to it. Um, bro, that's what I'll be having to say to all that shit to answer your question. I don't be worried about it. Um, bro. So, like, you, you don't... Like, because I feel like a lot of street rappers end up like actually, even if they aren't the types of people that talk to the media a lot or whatever, they end up kind of coming out and doing an interview and like breaking down why it's not the case or whatever. You're not really like concerned because I've I seen like people talking about paperwork and everything like that. You're not really stressing it. No, I don't really go around. That's not my job to try. And, that's not my job to try and go around and make people look at me a certain way. You feel me? I feel like a lot of these niggas, you got to you got to be able to see through these niggas. Like, damn, that's what your life, that's what your life is. You setting up the next interview, you setting up the next interview and the one after that 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 to go on your little girl tangents and just look like a clown at the end of the day. You feel me? Because you sitting there rambling, trying to hold on to something that don't matter. You feel me? Like, to me, I feel like the perception I get on me from a rap career, that shit just don't matter. You feel me? Like, it is. I'm a human, bro. I grew up as a kid. I'm just living life, having fun. You feel me? Do you... Oh, is there anything that happened in that case, though, that you regret in terms of anything? Like, do you, do you wish that you had handled it differently? Everything everything happens for a reason. You feel me? Oh, bro, whatever happened, happened. I wish, all I wish is I wouldn't have been a part of that shit. For real. Honestly. I had a lot of shit to do. I had better shit I could have been doing. Honestly. Felt like I was just... That's, that's what fuck up a lot of rappers... You get too cocky with this money and you just be like, man, I'm top dog. And then you just start committing crimes and shit. Mm -hmm. High off drugs, thinking you the shit. Oh, bro. Did you uh, leave a lot of the drugs behind at some point? Yeah, I don't fuck with none of that shit no more. I don't fuck with none of that shit no more. Was it just... Percocets, lean, all that type of shit. Was it fucking know. your life up or what? Hell yeah. That's where a lot of my money was going. What kind of drugs I at the time? I was paying rent. Per Percocet, Percocet, and lean. Yeah, because I seen like Percocet a story lean. where you, uh, I think this is the, before this case, you caught another case where you got arrested, like you were on Zans or something at like 15, and they found you on the yeah. side of the street, like passed out or some shit with a gun in your pocket or some shit like that? Yeah, that's when I had died and they brought me back to life. But yeah, I was, I was, I was breaking into cars and, uh. I found a gun. And I was walking home. I was a block away from the uh, from my house. And I took a little break because I was just exhausted. Next thing you know, I just woke up in the hospital, fell back, passed back out, woke up again like ten hours later, and then just they discharged me. I went to jail. They went. I went to uh, juvenile. <clears throat> uh, but that's how that shit went down. Yeah, I, I used to be hooked on drugs heavy. I did a lot of drugs growing up. I did. Ecstasy, Molly, Xanax, Percocet, Lean, uh, Acid. I did a lot of that shit at an early ass age. You know? I used to. My mindset used to be like, "Oh, I'm 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 13. I'm 14. I ain't dying anytime soon." You know, I usually used to go do stupid shit like I was invincible, oh, bro. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's good that you figured that out early, because I mean, I know a shitload of people are still kind of in that loop of uh doing drugs to make it through the day and shit. Oh bro, hell yeah. Nah yeah, that shit not the way to go. That that shit that shit definitely not the way to go. Is is there any kind of underground scene where you're at in Texas or is it like you're totally just isolated from all that shit? Oh, I'm out the way. I'm all the way in the country and shit. I'm just by myself on some cheap key shit. I'm just at home with my kids. Cool. Yeah, because you from, like, Fort, Fort Worth, right? Yeah, I'm from the west side of Fort Worth. Yeah. So what's the scene like? Any rappers coming out of Fort Worth right now? or? Uh, 
Yeah, Goyeo just got out. Oh, yeah. You ever tap in with him? Uh, nah, I've never spoke to him before. Uh, I ain't seen I ain't seen CJ drop no shit. I don't really be tapped into no Fort Worth artists like that. Honestly, I know Dallas going crazy right now. Yeah, are you like so, nah. into the street music, or do you mainly listen to more underground type shit? Or I dead ass only play myself, Chief Keith, Young Boy, when it come to rap. Like Lil Uzi, Juice World, uh, and then like other genres outside of that. So I don't really be keeping up with them. That too. Also, like I feel like I coulda. I feel like I coulda. I feel like when Uzi said my name in that song, he was throwing me like an alley oop. But I, that's just how much I don't seek fame type shit. I just let the ball fly past me type shit for real. You know, like at that moment when he say my name in the song, I'm supposed to. Deactivate my Instagram, wait about eight months, come back, drop some crazy shit, and then capitalize off it. You feel me? Deactivate okay. your Instagram for eight months, but that's like you becoming like dramatically more ducked off that, from that shout out, right? Like that's that's weird that that's, that's the, where your brain goes. That's the blueprint nowadays. That's the, niggas always want to be mysterious, but in order to be mysterious, you gotta you gotta be you gotta already be in position. You feel me? How much of a young like, boy influence you think there it is in that? Because I feel like that's the young boy approach nowadays. Like to deactivate the Instagram, come back, cook up. Uh, but he's consistent. You know, I'm talking more in the Cardi sense. Mm. Mm. But I'm I feel like you can only, sense. like, young boy, Dirk, Cardi, et cetera. I feel like being that rare and mysterious and ducked off, that that shit only really works when you're already, like, huge. And I feel like you're still probably like gaining new fans and shit. And it just feels like if you t get rid of your Instagram for eight months, that could be like kind of devastating. Yeah, it could be detrimental, but I have an understanding that people don't got about the internet, music, underground, SoundCloud, the algorithm type of shit. Like I just always been like, I wasn't that kid growing up like, man, I want to be a rapper. I was that kid growing up like, reading how a label works, watching videos on how, you know, this could brand you, how you could brand yourself off of this, brand yourself off of that, you know? That's one of the reasons I always wear the Burberry beanie or I always just wear the headpiece because, like, they know me off of something. Oh, the beanie, the ski mask, the, you know? So it'd be a lot of shit to where it's like, I used to research all that shit, you feel me? That's how, that's just how I was on bro. I ain't, I ain't really too much go the simple way about it for real did you ever uh like speak to uzi before he shouted you out in that song or where was that just out of nowhere no nah, that shit was random that shit was random it was fire though um, bro I, I grew up listening to uzi when he first started popping but that shit was hard do you that got too like damn you got too much pride to just say hey let's do a song together Nah, I, I ain't go about it the way the the, the right way, bro. That's mm. why I was saying like, once he said my name in that song, I I would have had to take that approach. Like, doing ghost for eight months is is iffy, but the way I would have done it, I know I would have had it in the bag. Like, I feel like when he did that, it's like, okay, can you run with the aesthetic? And I was just like, nah, I don't want to be famous. You feel me? So it's like, even if I did want to do a song with him. I didn't capitalize off of when he said that and come back with the image for it to be interesting for him. You feel me? Cause I be knowing how this shit. Be I mean, going. you say you don't want to be famous. It's interesting because, like, when I think about your career, like even as I'm talking to you, I'm just thinking of like the different artists that I could kind of like see you doing music with, and like, would you be able to fit in with more of like a street rapper type crowd and shit like that? Like, but is your brain not even really? on that in terms of like expanding your fan base or are you more just like nah i'm just gonna do whatever the fuck like you said i'm on some chief keef shit i mean he's the definition of just making the music you want to make and just staying ducked off and not really marketing your shit and just letting your fan base spread it yeah i just let the fans do their thing when it comes to you know making the music honestly I, I got a close connection with all my fans so this is really like when it comes to my fan base it's really like a family for real because my shit not just oh so toxic like I've had a lot of beef with rappers where people think I'm just some toxic ass nigga. But the reason why I keep such a cultivated fan base because they know I just 
try to be as authentic as possible and speak my mind. Sometimes when I speak my mind, it may not be totally agreeable, but that's just what I try to do. But yeah, to answer your question, I just like being on, like how you said, some social shit out the way, ducked off. Just making the music, not really doing shit. I be dropping a lot for real, bro. Why did you, back in the day, why did you decide to spell your name like that? Uh, that was always my IG at. Because, oh. of course, J-A-C-E was taken, so I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to spell it a crazy-ass way. Um, bro, and then that's just how that shit came about. But uh, I had to change it because that shit was getting too annoying. Too right. annoying from what perspective? Because, yeah, I think of it from the perspective of, like, somebody trying to Google you or search your shit on YouTube, and it's basically like a fucking nightmare scenario. Even though I do notice that, like, yeah. when I search J spelled either way, that it seems like the same shit comes up. Like, at some point, the YouTube algorithm figured out that this was the same person, but still yeah. probably fucking confusing as shit for the average fan, you know? Yeah, no, nah, most definitely. Hell yeah. That shit is how it was. Every time I told people like what my name was, I say I A Y. They be like I Y A. They be doing all types of weird shit. So I'd be like, yeah, I had to change my shit. I could imagine that just being like a ten minute conversation over and over. Yeah. Are you still signed with uh Simply Stupid? Nah, I'm independent. A word. So how long you but ain't I been rocking with them anymore? Hold on, let me close my door. All right, my bad. You said what? Yeah, I was asking about your uh, your label situation because for a long time, or when I first uh, got hip to you, you were signed to uh, Zeke, right? Simply Stupid. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, we just ended off on good terms, but I think uh, I think I think we I think we gonna redo a, a, another deal. Actually. With the same, like you're gonna go back fucking with uh Simply Stupid. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They was I was in contact with four labels before I signed with them. I just already knew where my best bet was. What made you yeah. choose them? Uh the stipulations in my contract. You feel me? Oh, so I got to own my masters. It wasn't owned in perpetuity, it was licensed. Uh I got the correct amount of albums I wanted. Um uh, Keep all my merch money, show money, all types of shit. So it was more like a yeah. fulfillment thing? Like you actually like fulfilled the contract? It wasn't like you got dropped or anything? Nah, I ain't, nah, yeah, I ain't get dropped. Oh, bro. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, this nigga trying to come lock in my bed this last time. Nah, you good. Did all right, but nah, yeah. Do you, um... Like, what do you even get out of signing with a label at this point, though? Like, why not just do your shit yourself? Are they, like, helping marketing-wise or anything? Or? Uh, it helps with streaming. Hmm. Kind of, like, interlocks both worlds, for real. Gives me a chance to... Because what streaming allowed me to do was turn music from my main income to a passive income. You feel me? So when when it comes to a deal, it's like, why not? You feel me? That's how I look at it now, um, bro. For sure. Yo, you had like a few viral moments from back in the day. One of them being is with the whole Twisty P scenario, because I believe you were a part of it. Remember, uh, y'all was like chasing uh, Twisty yeah. P? Where was this at? Yeah, yeah. This was Texas? Yeah, that was in Houston. Yeah, break down what happened that day, because a lot of people still don't know what the fuck was going on. I remember... Was that his beanie that, uh, hit, that hit the ground? Y'all burned it up and shit like that? Y'all spitting on the stop <laughs> on yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. What the fuck was going on with Twisty P? So, yeah, how, break down that day and how do you even know Twisty P? Because we got a long history um, with Twisty P on this podcast, yeah. I was just watching y'all. I was just watching y'all premiere that interview with him. That shit was funny as hell. That nigga speaking cold, bro. You got you to gotta know what type person he is to understand him for him. I feel like he was yeah. more normal back when you were dealing with him, and now he's, like, kind of just out there. He out there, but he be making sense, but he do it in a certain way. I don't know if he be on some funny shit. Huh? That's a little inside joke I got with my people. But like, what happened with it? He was on TikTok making like songs and shit, and uh, he had dissed Summer's deceased grandmother, mm. 
and he had dissed my kids. He had threatened my kids in the song, and it was going viral. Like, nigga, I'm playing. I'm 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 at the crib in Houston playing Call of Duty on the computer. I'm hearing niggas in game chat singing this shit. You know, we were like, singing damn, that shit we, like crazy. That that was that was a whole it. era. But nobody knowing what he really saying in the lyrics. Mm. You feel me? And uh, I just let it be. It was it was going viral. I just let it be. But push come to shove, it was you know probably a week after that. Woke up. I guess he was in Houston. You feel me? And that's just how it was. N- niggas picked him up from the airport. Uh, he, he thought it was all cool, and then we beat his ass. But he ain't nobody to really just brag about <laughs> giving an ass whooping to. But it was just like. A lot of the troll shit on internet, niggas be knowing they thousands of miles away, so they say anything. But the real deal, niggas really will give you a spanking about that shit. Um, bro, no diddy. Um, bro. <laughs> no diddy's <laughs> crazy. Um, no bro. diddy about no twisty diddy. p is crazy. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That that is crazy. It's like he's, I don't know. He's probably one of the more interesting figures to come out of the underground in a lot of ways. But it doesn't seem like his life is going in a very good direction at this point. Uh, he could have did baseball. That's what fucked my head up. Yeah, I seen that too. Could have been crazy in the league. Could have been crazy. Yeah, his stats was crazy too. That's what people were saying. Walking away from something that's like guaranteed you're rich as fuck to do whatever he's been doing. That's it's hard to wrap your head around. You said you watched the interview. I don't know what happened to him. You said what? You said you watched the interview. So was he trolling? Is he on drugs? Like, what do you take from watching that? Like. See, that's what I was about to say. I don't know what drugs he's on because growing up, I done seen a lot of twackers. You feel me? And he seemed, he got the traits of one, like how he dress and how he move. But it's just something about him that's like, I don't think he's really just on drug drugs. You feel me? I think he's taking synthetic drugs. If he is on drugs, it's synthetic drugs. Um, bro, Because I ain't never seen them type of symptoms before. But in the interview, I just think, look, this is what I think of Twisty, bro. I think I think he I think he is somewhat competent, but he just be playing around like he the main character in his own world, fool. You know? Um bro. And he like to he like to if you ask him a question, he not gonna answer your question. He gonna answer it with some sort of mini riddle. You feel <laughs> yeah. me? And it's like, nigga, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. Um, bro. I feel like he might not be on like drugs. He's I think he's like schizophrenic. If I had to guess, yeah, I gotta be, gotta be, yeah, something like that. Twisty but, B, he's a he's an interested person though. He's he's interested, bro. Do you think he's got yeah. more hits tucked like that one, like that one song <laughs> when he says like I I shoot for fun? Yeah, that one. He could come. He could come out. Like if he could make more songs like that, then he is basically Drake, and we need to nurture his talent. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. He, he, he can't he can't pass Lil B, but he'll be up there for sure. No, yeah, but Lil yeah. B is like a good person to compare him to. It's almost it's like almost that bizarre. It's based. <laughs> Do you feel like uh, Twisted P kind of helped uh, get Yeet career where it needed to be? You give him that credit. Um, I seen y'all asking him that. I feel like uh, I feel like he had. I feel like he had. I feel like he had a good part in it. I couldn't give him all the credit, but I, I would say he did. How Yee's career was going up, I feel like when Twisty P came around, that kind of gave it like a ten time boost, kind of just sped it up real fast, um, bro. Because it started to be more of a staple, like Yee's music. Once like, because when you think of the Yee era, you think of that crazy nigga that was walking around doing shit, Twisty P ass. Um, bro. But now Yeet has such a mainstream fan base that I would assume that like 99% of people who listen to, to Yeet have no fucking clue about the whole Twisty yeah, B thing. Yeah, they don't know. They don't be doing it. Oh, bro, they don't be doing it. Yeet moving like Drake, though. Honestly. Yeah, now he's mega mysterious. We don't really see. I mean, I guess you see some random shit, but very rarely. Yeah, who would you say from, underground's crazy. Yeah, who would you say from the underground uh, besides yourself could like, actually do because you see Richard Mary's kind of like taking over and getting from the underground lane, mm-hmm. taking it to the next level. Did you see that for Rich? Because y'all was somebody who was all uh, cool early on collabing and doing shit. Uh, and what's y'all relationship now? Nah, I ain't see that for him. It was crazy when I see that. Uh, it was crazy when I see that. When I think of something that's about to hit the mainstream next, I'm thinking about 
real deal. I, I really can't I really couldn't put my finger on the next big thing, but with all with all the new talent coming out the underground right now, I do expect that organically it'll be one of these new rappers before Rich and Mary. You feel me? Like I think uh Damn. Chat, y'all gonna get on my ass for this. They gonna get on my ass for this. But I think I do think Netspin and them got a good got a good chance at being being pretty up there, honestly. When you say them, you mean like Osama son? Netspin and them? Uh, nah, not Osama son. I don't see him being shit. His ass cloning shit. Oh, all right. <laughs> cloning, I, mean, I, I heard you. I heard him diss him in a song. You said he ain't never did shit or something. He dissed me first. Oh, okay. What do you say about you? Same shit. Everybody could say. Word. You feel me? Yeah, that's 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 just how I went. So you saying that spin is gonna once blow you, past? Once you a rapper, once you a rapper and you cloning people, that's forever. You will never be able to surpass the person you're trying to replicate. You feel me? It's never happened in history of music. Who do you feel ever. like you're trying to replicate? Opium. Mm. <laughs> you get the shit a lot. He even bought the same masks as these niggas. What if he signed to him? What if he became official? Then fuck me. He shit in my face. Oh, <laughs> but other than that, other than that, um, bro, I don't see it. I don't see it going nowhere too much. But I do think Nespin has a good shot. Nespin has a good shot for real. Do you still see Yeet as part of the underground because of the music? Or do you look at it differently because he's so fucking big now? He's definitely out of the underground now, but he is a staple of like, damn. This is, this is the last big. Uh, what would you say, like, tick in SoundCloud history? What's the next one gonna be? You know, he mm -hmm. kind of did it. He 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 fulfilled his his job already, his mission as far as underground wise. But do you feel like his music? Do do you like his new music, or do you feel like he's switched up too much? I feel like his shit is still weird as fuck, right? Yeah, I I it's not my cup of tea, but I see where he's going with it. I, I, his last album wasn't my type of shit at all. I didn't like it, but when you think about it, that shit could be in a few movies or something, you know? A few of them songs on there could be in some films, you know? I think Destroy Lonely was in the new Insidious movie. Mm. Uh, that type of shit. Yeah, have you been Bro. seeing the shit where people have been saying Yeats losing his aura or whatever? You feel like he kind of losing it since he went mainstream more or no? Nah? nah, he's still maintaining it. That's just people trying to cope because he's not interacting with the underground no more. Honestly. Come on, bro. They try to say Cardi lost his aura after that Aiden Ross shit. He came back. Nobody give a fuck no more. Still car, still evil Jordan. Everybody <laughs> love him. Come on, bro. You you appreciate Cardi's music or are you are you over it? I fuck with it. I was I'm I'm a I'm a big fan of Cash Cardi. But his new shit that's been leaking out lately, I fuck with it. Hard. The little deep voice shit. It was hard. Yeah, that is a fucking so, weird plot twist, huh? Yeah, yeah. Like as a I rapper, know I ain't know you do this shit. You didn't used to. You you used to be able to switch up your flow, but now you can just switch up your voice. Yeah, that shit. He be he be coming on some crazy ass shit. Yeah, bro. Definitely. Yeah, he be who, he be he be he be switching up his voice. That should be crazy. Who linked you with uh dot com Nirvana? Cause you uh y'all did the Khmer uh video a long time ago. A Twisty P disc. They teamed up to take down Twisty. Was that a label oh. decision or? <laughs> nah, Dot Com Nirvana reached out to me for our first ever video. We have we have more of a personal connection than a business connection. But I ain't talked to him in forever. I really need some new shit by him. I I ain't spoke to him in forever. That's really crazy. Come, bro. Yeah, cause Dot Com Nirvana. Yeah, that was a classic. Him, bro. Yeah, that's a classic video right there. Another. Yeah, uh, yeah that's. You saying what? Nah, but you know that video is all, a whole Twisty P diss, right? All the running and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That shit's hilarious. He made me, that wasn't my idea. He made me do that shit. That shit was funny as hell. That's I just like, watch that video for him. That's a I hilarious idea that like, you know, you have an issue with somebody, but it's some goofy shit and like they're running and then you just like base the entire song around that. Like, I just felt like you went about making that a diss song in such a cool way. I, I, I like that song yeah, too. I, I, made the, it, I, I, made it, I made it the same night it happened. That's why my voice was gone. You feel me? Oh, really? Damn. Yeah, I made it the same night. We we just be on. It just be a lot of 
it'd be a lot of funny shit happening on the underground, like just a little side, like a little side shit you won't be expecting. How did you and uh Can Can start going on the back and forth? Cause he, I think he dropped the song, but then you dropped the song, and then one of the songs you was like, uh, Can 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 Catch Fifty out this F N N. Where did the whole, where did y'all even start going bar. back and forth? And that was a hard ass bar. Uh, he already had songs dissing me, but they was like leaking out. But then when he had my cameraman, cause my cameraman was cool with all of us. J Money, so right? When he, yeah, but it was 88 who shot this 80, one. All right, for sure. And he was telling Lameem like, hey, shoot this, Jace this for me. And Lameem was already telling me like, I'm not shooting no diss songs for you. Like that's what he told me. Like if I got a song shot with Lameem, it's not, it's a song, you feel me? So when Lameem was like, bro, if I shoot this for you, then you gotta, you can't be mad when I shoot Jay shit. You feel me? And that's just how it was. He shot they shit, came back to me. He was like, can dropping this tomorrow. He was like, but I'm gonna do your shit, even though I told you I wasn't going to, because that's what he told him basically. If, if he gotta do his shit, then he gonna record my diss. And that's just how it went. It'd be a lot of, it's just a lot of entertainment behind this shit, bro. So you was, working, just be, you was working with 88 first and J Money? Cause I, I was paying attention to that. I'm like, damn. Like, cause I uh, to be truthful, like J Money, I was the only one trying to shoot with J Money. Like J Money reached out to damn near all of us, and nobody hit him back. But like, I'm like, I'm from Fort Worth, you know, so I'm like J Money. That's J Money ten four one. Like, hell yeah, he shot with Splurge. He did the Uzi shit. Like, hell yeah, I want to shoot, with bro. And ever since then, like we've been locked in. That's what that's my brother for real, um, bro. Yes, but so you were working with him before any other Slay World members, pretty much. That's what you're saying. Damn near, basically, yeah. Technically, yeah. I did, I did one video with J Money. They seen how clean my shit came out, and then they was, uh, then they wanted some videos by that nigga. Oh, bro, that's how that shit went. And another moment too that uh, tripped me out. How did you and YB in the mirror getting that back and forth? Well, how how do you know him from back in the day, right? We used to play the game together. Mm. We used to oh, play yeah. like San and we was playing San Andreas together. Before he was like, even lit? Before any of that. Right. And uh he was hitting niggas up on Skype. He was like, Hey, if you send me ten dollars on PayPal, I'll shout you out on my YouTube channel. Cause his YouTube channel had like a couple thousand subs type shit, some views, cause he was doing like the the GTA videos, you know? And uh basically I just went on Say Cheese and talked about that moment. He came out and was like, I don't know this nigga from a can of paint. Like, nigga, if I wanted to lie about knowing somebody, nigga, I would say I knew Shaq. Like, why the fuck would I say <laughs> I knew Namir, you feel me? So that's when I just hopped on live and was telling him, like, everything. I Only only somebody that knew of him or knew him could know. You feel me? I'm bringing up close friends. I'm bringing up what they did. I'm bringing up his friends that he brought with him to the fame. I'm bringing up what they did back then. Like, the niggas that's hard to find anything about on the internet. And then that's when he just finally admitted, like, he knew me type shit. That's just how that shit went. How did y'all even end up in the same online circle from GTA back in the day? Like, you found him through his YouTube shit? Like, now nah, this shit was so small. Like, how you, it's a bunch of nerdy ass shit, but how it used to work. It's like, you see, you see the niggas doing GTA 5M, right? Yeah. It was basically like that, but San Andreas. So you couldn't talk. It was just typing. But that's how, that's how it was. And basically, like, uh, one of the most popular servers at that time. We was both in it type shit. Um, bro. And then there's just a lot of nerdy shit that linked us up together on Skype. But it wasn't like we was just talking back and forth on Skype. Like we just came about to each other. I don't know how to explain it for real. So when he uh, popped off shit. and he took Corday and Almighty J with him, were you kind of looking at that shit like, damn, I want to be a rapper too? Like what was your perspective on that? Nah, so what's crazy, what I never really just talked about publicly, I think I did in a few interviews, but uh, I was close, but I knew Almighty J. You feel me? I knew of Namir from the Skype situation off the game, but I knew J. Like, we was in the same rap group. We was in some little rap group type shit, and uh, it was called Trap Boys Family. And uh, when they took off, I was more looking at J. Like, damn, that nigga made it happen, you know? Cause I didn't really know too much of Namir, just knew him from the game and that Skype situation. But like, I was actually making covers for Jay at a point in time, you feel me? So like, that's why I was like, yeah, I knew it could happen for me type shit. Cause I'm like, okay, this possible type shit. 
we going in the world. When 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 Jay popped off with that song, I can't admit that I was like, damn, the world is starting to go into a different place as far as musically, you know? Cause at, around that time, that's when the little skies and the industry plant method and this was all popping and the game could be easily extorted at that time. You could just have your way with the rap game at the time. So that's where I noticed like, okay, this shit getting real. Like the internet is starting to become a real outlet for niggas to make it out type shit. You feel me? Cause people forget that for like a long time, if you wanted to be a popular rapper, you kind of needed to be like co-signed by a bigger rapper, or like get signed by a label or whatever. And like during that era, it just really, man, it just felt like everybody, even I, I could think of a lot of lame ass rappers that never had a shot at all ever who got like a million dollars from the label and then never recouped a fucking nickel like the craziest shit ever like it was just such a it was like a, a crypto boom yeah it was that a, a, a lot of that shit back then was crazy um yeah rap rap a lot of them rappers ain't nowhere to be heard from see but what's crazy though is a lot of the best rappers from way back then passed away now you feel me that's what fucked my head up you know uh Nipsey, X, Juice mm -hmm. World, P and B Rock. So it's like, damn, that era really don't got nothing left. Except for Lil Zan. I ain't heard of Lil Zan in years. I don't know where the fuck he been. Yeah, I interviewed him a while back. You know, it's like it, it's just crazy when you think about how the world treated them. That they treated them like he was the most interesting fucking person on earth and they published articles about him and posted clips of him every day. Until like just one day, boom, it just stopped. And they were like, we don't give a fuck anymore. It's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was smashing up. Like, Lil Xan, right? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, yeah. Yeah, he was smashing up cars and shit. <laughs> yeah. Shit. But it was just very abrupt with them. They went from like talking about every single thing he did to just not mentioning him at all. Yeah, that's how the, ind that's how the industry worked, for real. You only... you. You as an artist, no matter how much control you have through a contract, you still got like limited control with how you're relevant. You feel me? Like you can do your best, but sometimes the mass majority just control that shit. That's how that shit be. I mean, Lil Zane was never really control. that good musically, and then he didn't take the music serious at all. You know, like he didn't really like yeah. go crazy recording and shit. And like a lot of people go crazy recording and they still don't really like come up with that much good music, but he didn't even really try. He was just kind of partying his ass off. Hell yeah, nah, yeah. That's that's what I be noted. Uh, nobody really be caring about music no more, like about the music. Like I be trying to make shit where I can really have people relate. Like I like talking about shit, for real. Like, cause if you look at the underground on the spectrum, my music is the only music that sounds like it's made in a studio booth, you know? The sort of aesthetic of SoundCloud music is to have that distortedness to it, some mm -hmm. shit you can vibe to, all that type of shit. But I'll just be trying to aim to make like real type music for real. Definitely. So, okay, back to the Namir thing though. When did you guys start beefing? Because you guys had this infamous Instagram live call where you're getting on his ass for the GD to Crip thing. How, where did that come from? Uh, so when we was in the like where did it come from or like, how did it come about on the live yeah why'd you guys get on live in the first place were you already arguing about something yeah so it was when he said he didn't know me after that interview and i basically went live and was like nigga if i didn't know you why would i say i knew you you not nobody to lie about i right. got to lie about knowing so many more crazier people and uh when he hopped on live he drove he kept saying he kept acting like he, he swore up and down he didn't know me he was putting that on gangs and all types of shit and uh, that's what drove me to start talking about shit only i could know and then it brought me to bring up how there's a video of him on the internet that still don't got too many views and he's freestyling outside of a car and he's banging gd and now he's banging crypt so i was asking him how did that even happen you know and i guess he just couldn't even really explain for real. I guess it caught him off guard type shit. But that's how that shit went about. I just started talking about shit that only I could know. Yeah, I wonder if that was the first time anybody had ever said that to him. Yeah, I've never seen it before. <laughs> he hit I've you with the classic answer of it just happened. It happened. 
Oh, bro, that shit legendary. legendary. <laughs> Who was the dude up on the live with you? I think because that guy also, he was in Slay World too, right? Like, the fat dude? Uh, Nah, he's in Double R. That was Dayro. Word. Oh, bro. His name is something like that. Oh, bro. And the whole Double R came about from a Young Boy song. That's where they got the name from. I think I seen you say that too recently. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shit came from the Young Boy song. I love Double R was fucking with Young Boy Heavy. Yeah, you were saying like uh, y'all used to talk to Young Boy on uh, Discord or some shit, or you think it was Young Boy? No, they used to talk to a fake page, and I I had nothing to do with it, and they said it was Young Boy, and I thought it was funny as hell, cause I I really felt and pretty much know that that wasn't Young Boy, but the nigga was sending voice messages. It did sound like Young Boy, but I know it wasn't Young Boy. I think it was just a troll or something, or like it was just funny as hell. It was just a random ass moment I remember. Yeah. I remember uh, a minute ago, you and Bobbalam was going back and forth, too. What's y'all relationship right yeah, now? Yeah, he about to come out. He about, he about, to, he about to come out here uh, in a few weeks. Oh, word. We're going to do a stream together. Bobbalam, he cool. I just don't like some of his takes, and I just don't like how he talk sometimes. Like, I feel like to be a professional, to be a professional um, blogger or, you know, <laughs> influencer when it comes to the music or underground music i feel like you can't hold a bias you know and i feel like he shows too much of his bias that's the only thing i don't have a problem with like i mean the only thing i do have a problem with type shit give me an example of a bias that you feel like he had was it against you nah he'll have biases against a lot of people he'll you know you could just go to his youtube and you'll see his kind of takes on certain things and it's like there's a difference between giving your take on something and then just flat out being like, oh, this artist, because it, it's been molding me. Like, he'll just bust out and be like, this artist label is paying me for the promo. This artist is doing, the, you know, and he just makes it look all goofy. He makes it look like the artists need him. You feel me? I feel like he has too much ego sometimes. But other than that, I think he a cool dude. I fuck with some of his takes. That's cool that you're, like, down to do content with him and shit like that, because... I mean, a lot of people in the underground are kind of socially retarded and, like, don't really, like seem like they could hold a conversation on camera and i feel like that's part of what makes you kind of unique for the underground like aside from the fact that you have like a lot of beefs and shit with people or that you just are, are very like speak your mind just will say whatever about people but it's just also the fact that you're like a good communicator and can actually hold a conversation and i, I can't really say that about a lot of people in the underground yeah, it's all it's all for the aesthetic. I just like giving the people what they want, so I'm interested, honestly. I've I, I've always, it, growing up, it wasn't just music. You know, I, I've always thought, like, okay, I could do content one day. I could do streaming. I could do YouTube. Like, that's some shit I feel like I could be able to do, you know. I would be able to do, and uh, I'm just made that shit happen for real. So I feel like, uh, go ahead. Do you feel like the streaming takes away from your aura or, like, the mysteriousness at all, or is it just worth it because that's just who you are? Shit, I've never tried to be mysterious. I drop like every month. I ain't gonna lie. I drop like every month. I don't be promo and shit. I don't be doing rollouts for a lot of shit. I just throw shit out there and just keep streaming, honestly. I just feel like <clears throat> option two, what you gave, you know, it kind of just works for me. It's what I like to do is fun. Uh, all that type of shit. I feel like it's just when it passes time, it's cool to chill and talk to the supporters all that type of shit you know um, but yeah it ain't it ain't i ain't really looking for no mysterious aesthetic type shit that shit wouldn't work for nobody like me because of the type of presentation i feel like it's hard to be mysterious after you have certain presentations on the internet you feel me like if you already have a whole history of shit from point a to point b i feel like it'd be hard to go mysterious cardi kind of got that early Cardi was like, you knew Cash Cardi, he went ghost, didn't hear from him, from him for like forever, and then he came back on that crazy shit. You feel me? No, oh, yeah, Bro. definitely. But what what do you mostly do on stream? And like, what do you feel like you get out of it that you really appreciate? Just that direct connection to your fans? Yeah, on stream, I either just be watching YouTube videos, catching up on the music scene, playing games, shit like that, talking to the supporters, all that type of shit. Um... It be going up. It be going up. Like that's what, what I feel like. I just really gain from it is the connection. Like really just being able to 
personally engaged because like an Instagram live is an Instagram live. It's a difference between Instagram live and streaming. I feel like the people really get to learn me as a person, figure out who I am type shit. How long you been fighting this case now? It's been like at least two uh, years. It's it seemed been like, like two, three yeah, years. It's been like two years. Two years. When do you think this is going to be resolved so you can finally get back out of Texas, get back on the road and shit? Shit, sometimes soon. Sometimes soon, shit. Are y'all all, y'all all still fighting it or just you? Like, uh, I don't know too much about. I don't know. I don't really know. Mm -hmm. I think we all. I, I, it's it's a lot of shit. I, I can't speak about a lot of shit that's going, but I know what's. We just it, we still fighting it, but shit gonna be over probably like this year or something like that. Hopefully, on um, bro. Any plans? Um, as soon as you get off, uh, or as soon as you're able to uh, rotate and get back out here. What do you got planned, or what are you looking forward to do? Shit. Hit New York. Hit New York a lot, honestly. I fuck with New York heavy. That's really it. Why New York? Why do you have so um, much love for New York, yeah? It's something about it. I don't know. I'm a person who don't I'm sleep, and my sleep schedule be all types of fucked up. New York don't never sleep. You feel me? It's always something happening out there. You feel me? It's dirty as hell at night. Manhattan, at least. But uh, it's just interesting to me. I like I like all the activity going around. You don't feel like it's, you know, all I know is country growing up. I fuck with that type of shit. So at one point, it was announced that Cole Bennett was going to do the 556 video with Offset and G Herbo, but then that never came out. What happened with that? It had leaked. But it was just over at that point. The video leaked? Nah, the song. Oh, really? So it was around this time. Uh, I know Trippy talked about it. It was a big wave. It was just a fat ass list of rappers getting their shit sim swapped. Mm. And I was one of them. Trippy got his shit sim swapped. Warhol got his shit sim swapped. That's how I got sim swapped. Because whoever sim swapped Warhol messaged me and was like, let's do this song. Then sent me an iCloud link. And I clicked the iCloud link like a dumbass. And the next thing you know, all this music leaked by the next day. And that was one of the songs. Wow. Yeah. So that just like killed the momentum to actually do it? Yeah. Because everybody already just had access to it. Wasn't no point. Hmm. Interesting. The last one I got is just uh, why did you uh, diss Slump Sixes? Why do I or why did I? Why did you? Like, what what, what was that about? Because the YouTube video I saw said that it was just because he, like, played one of your songs at a show, which sounded like it wasn't really that big a deal, right? Um, Nah, see, I was still early in my career. I was still low on followers, all types of shit. I probably had, like, 40K. And Slump, he was already established before me because he was already on top of the TikTok shit. Oh, shit. A, a hater was in my DM talking shit, and we was going back and forth. And uh, the nigga was like, Slump Six is better than you or something like that. And he was saying he was cool with Slump Sixes. <laughs> but I'm so early, I'm not used to the trolls. So I'm not knowing he's just a random ass troll. So then that's when I sent them the video of Slump playing my shit at the concert. It was like, but them niggas fuck with my music, you know, like talking my shit, you feel me? And then he responded, then I responded type shit. But yeah, my biggest my biggest songs, uh, some of my biggest songs were the diss diss on Slump and the diss on Dami, and the diss on Twisty. Oh, bro. But so would you say that's like a current thing, or do you not give a shit? You you actually hold the grudge against them? Nah, I don't care. It's all music to me at the end of the day. Like I said earlier in the interview, it, it ain't nothing you do to me as a person. It it would take a lot for me to really just want the worst for you. You feel me? Because I know what type of energy that brings when you, when you push that out. Definitely. I feel it. Any new music you're working on? You said you're always working on music and shit. Anything dropping soon? Or what you got cooking up? Yeah, I'm working on a I'm working on an album right now. That shit crazy as fuck. That shit mainstream as fuck. Like that shit real deal music for like I'm reaching out to grown folks. I'm reaching out to my mama. She's showing her friends. Like I'm getting validation from like older folks on this music. You feel me? This is most some shit that you could it's still some soundcloud vibey shit in there but the main focus of the songs on the project on the album is like 
shit anybody can play in their car. You can hear that shit in the car. You can hear that. You can play it anywhere. Nobody won't be like, damn, he need to turn that shit down. You know, it's like real deal music. You feel me? And uh, me get my hands on most shit, like starting to work with hardware. Because like I said, I'll be engineering my own shit. Be editing my own videos, doing my own covers. So like, I just been locked in this room, fucking around with different music equipment, producing beats. I produced a lot of this shit on this album. A lot of the mainstream shit too, which is crazy. So yeah, because really I just I, that trying to focus on evolving. I was like really, like kind of surprised by how much I liked your music when I was listening to a bunch of it. Because I feel like I feel like when I first heard about you, I I realized that your name was spelled like that and pronounced like that, and I was just kind of felt like it was some like mega underground oddball shit. But then when I was listening to it the other day, I was yeah. like getting really really into it. I got to listen to more yeah, of the recent I, nah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, nah, yeah. That's how I be when people be coming in my chat telling me these popping. I be thinking the same shit. Like, I don't know who they are. He probably lowest of the underground, just on some real, you know, that that real authentic underground shit. Some shit you gotta have an ear for to listen to. But I try to make music for everybody to have an ear for. You know, um, bro. My last question yeah. is: When the hip hop civil war starts and you have to pick sides between Drake and like Kendrick Lamar and Future uh, and Rick Ross, which side are you gonna go be willing to die for? <laughs> uh, I need to ask every rapper that question. Uh, That's a good question. I think I think I think I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go slide for Mario Judah. I ain't gonna lie. I, I don't <laughs> think I can get behind Drake or Kendrick Lamar. I think I'm sliding behind Mario Judah. We got to figure out. Damn, Mario Judah is like a a rogue warlord that'll just be like taking over some like patch in, in the woods or That's some shit. That's where you want to be. If it's a hip hop civil war, yo ass going to be with. You, you going to want to be with Mario fucking Judah. His ass do some crazy. He pull a witch spell out of some shit. You don't know what the fuck he might do. Am, am I crazy or was Mario Judah's music actually kind of good? Especially like the him doing the like what he thought that a uh, whole was, lot of red was, was gonna was, sound that like. That shit used to be that stuck in my head. Gym. That shit was pretty good. Where I was is like, he now? Yeah, I ain't seen him, bro. That shit used to be uh, or BFP the Pac Man. Oh, that was a good Same era. Type of funny shit. BFB is funny oh, as fuck. Okay. Yeah, no, that was a good man right there. Um, all right, Remo, you got anything else? Yeah. yeah. Nah, that sums it up, man. Just looking forward to uh, hearing some new music from you, though, for sure. For so, yeah, I appreciate it, bro. It was good talking to y'all for shit, so. Nah, for sure. And uh, I'm definitely going to make sure to check out the, the latest music on the drive home right now. So I'm going to tap in. Yeah, I'm going to definitely appreciate that. Appreciate so, you, man. Nah, Jace, Remo, thank you very much. No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Appreciate y'all.